Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, the stars come out at night, and especially here on East West Audio Body Shop, we've had Tom Kenny and Tara Strong and June Ferre and Debbie Derryberry and all these great people. Well, we've got another one coming up this Monday night, 9 o'clock. Emmy Award winning animation voice Maurice LaMarche is finally going to be here on EWABS, and we are looking forward to talking to him. He's a, an amazingly talented man. You guys do not want to miss that. I'm going to demystify ISDN and IP audio codecs. What is all this stuff? What talks to what? What's the next thing you should look for? Is ISDN going away? I'll try to condense all this down to about a 10 minute package that you guys can digest. God willing. And I'm going to be talking about something a little simpler. How to properly set your levels. People keep asking me about that, so we're going to cover that in my tip of the week. And I'll have a highlight from the AES show that I just came back from out in New York City, so check that out. That's East West Audio Body Shop with special guest Maurice LaMarche this Monday night, 9 o'clock in the East. And 6 o'clock in the West. And we'll see you there. there. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen, and the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica and his penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, here we are once again, another Monday night, and... It just doesn't get any better than this. Well, we'll mm. see. Well, well, then again, there's always next week. Uh, we've got... Uh, we get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, really. Nothing it's, is certain. This is true. <laughs> um, we have a great show tonight. As usual, it's always a great show, but we got great information. We've got great stuff to talk about, but we also have a great guest. Somebody who we have, we have been scouring the edges of the earth to get on our show. Mm -hmm. And finally said, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, Maurice LaMarche, Emmy Award winning Ma Maurice LaMarche, great animation voice to win more than just animation stuff. Just a great voice actor. He will be on here and we'll be talking about all of his great stuff, all the stuff he does, he's did, done in his career and so much for mine. Uh, and, um, <laughs> we'll have fun talking to him. We, you know, we, we know it's going to be great. Plus he's from Toronto. So the Toronto contingent that's out there are going to go. Yeah, he's from Toronto. And of course, he remembers all the stuff from Buffalo because people in Toronto yeah. watched so much Buffalo good talent. TV. So much good talent from Canada, man. Gosh, I know. It's incredible. William Shatner. It goes know, on and on. Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey and oh, uh, Mike uh, Myers. Martin, Martin Short. Martin Short. It's just incredible. John Candy, who's Gosh, no longer with us. But so what many a great what, comedians. What, what, what is it about? Can so obviously, it's like. It's like uh, Barcelona in Spain. There's something in the water. They gave us mm. Gaudi and Picasso and Dali mm -hmm. and a few other weird guys. Canada <laughs> gives us funny people. One so after another. One after another. <laughs> anyway, Maurice will be joining us in a little bit. Uh, but we got lots to talk about tonight here as well. Now, you were in New York all week. How did that go? It went great. I was at the AES show, and I had a, I had a really good time. Here I am riding the city bike. <laughs> in i'm not gonna turn up the sound because the audio is just wind noise but this is the this is the road leading into javits center well this is like 35th street and it was totally <laughs> torn up and bumpy as all oh, get out and i'm riding along trying to shoot video it was hilarious <laughs> but uh i had a lot of fun i i, I love riding bike i love and i like the i like the adrenaline the adrenaline of riding around a city so to me it's not that terrifying and uh, to be able to, to get, get on a bike, ride to another point, get off, lock the bike up at another bike station, I think is the coolest thing ever. And uh, I rented the bike. I did, a, I did the week pass for $25, unlimited use. Yeah. And um, there was a cheaper station. Cheaper than the cab. Cheaper than the cab, especially if you're just trying to get like, you know, 20, 30 blocks, 40 blocks across town. The right. bike is just as fast as a cab. 
Um, and they got some bike lanes now. And there's a bike parking depot right next here to the J- <laughs> Jacob Javits. So I just right. ride on down and park the bike, and I'm there. It was Absolutely. it was a blast. And the best thing of all was being able to meet up with Uncle Roy, Roy Oakelson, yeah, after Roy. The, the show on Friday. I picked up a bike here at the same depot, and I rode all the way from 34th Street to Canal Street. Or even below wow. canal. And if you know how far that is, that's like... Oh, I know. That's I know. a trek, man. <laughs> I've walked it. So. Oh, man, that's a long way. <laughs> so that, that, here's the bike locking depot. You pull the bike in and it goes chunk and locks in place and for the next person. Um, yeah. But it was a blast. I really had a great time, man. I, I got a lot of footage. So I'll, I'll show you guys one clip near the end of the show from the Neumann booth. Chris Courier showing the new TLM 107. And then uh, we'll we'll move on from there. But uh, I'll have a lot more as time goes on as I get to edit it all together. Excellent. Excellent. All righty. Well, we got a big crowd tonight, and they want to hear what we have to say because they come here to hear us talk shop. Who guessed it? Who would have known these people would want to hear what we have to say? It's it, it, it stifles me every day and bothers the heck out of my wife every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, you got some good stuff to talk about. You're going to talk about uh, ISDN and Source Connect and Sound Streak and two cans and a string. Oh yeah, I know. It's 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 a jumble. It's a jungle. It's a jumble. It's a jumble there. of a jungle. Yeah, it's a jumble of a jungle out there. Um, I keep seeing discussions about this stuff popping up on the web. It's they're coming up on Facebook and the VOBB and all the haunts that I usually hang out at the link the LinkedIn uh, Voiceover Professionals forum, which is really active. And uh, there's just a lot of misconceptions or confusions about what's, what's, what's going on with ISDN, what's going to take its place. So first, let me start with ISDN. Is it going away? Well, yes, it's going away. But that's not really the question. The question's not if, it's a question of when. And um, that is the hard part to figure out. As we've talked about before, and you've probably heard if you've looked in anything ISDN, is that it's no longer even available to those in the uh, up the north east section of the u.s i don't know if that starts at pennsylvania or new york uh but if you're in that quadrant if you're in manhattan or jersey you're you're not getting uh isdn okay so if you don't already have it and you're not able to transfer the circuit you're not going to be able to get it so the bottom line is uh that's affecting some people directly i have a few clients who are moving and or built homes or just are building a new studio and it's directly affecting them so it's very frustrating so honestly we're looking for the next best thing and uh, productions out there are gonna they're gonna hold on to isdn it's like pry it out of my cold dead hands kind of thing they they, they don't want anybody to touch their isdn and they're gonna keep using it until you know it just becomes so unreliable or so hard to get or their talents start losing access to isdn in in mass um and at that point maybe then they'll start considering something different so they're not going it's not going anywhere anytime soon and i'm still facilitating the installation of isdn for either a talent or a production facility probably once a month so it, it ain't going anywhere folks and if you're at that level where the your management or, or i'm sorry your, your agent or whomever is telling you you need to have it because you're losing work um yes then it's time to consider it okay so it's still something out there but luckily because it's less and less uh in use the hardware is more used used hardware is more available uh, you can find it uh, especially old uh codecs from uh, telos and musicam especially the older, noisier ones with fans, well under $1,000. So it's not quite as dear as it maybe was a couple of years ago. So ISDN, yeah, it's not going anywhere. But if you're not you know, really at that level yet, or you're not going to want to buy into old technology, and it's just not as crucial to your career right now, what would you consider in its place? Um, first of all, let me be completely honest. I am in cahoots with source elements. Okay, I said it. It's out there on the table. Everybody knows I am. I knew it. I'm a dealer. I've been a dealer for Source Connect for like five years. Okay. So we got that out of the way. That said, um, I've talked to Rebecca, who's the owner of Source Connect, and she very much appreciates that I am neutral about its, you know, its comp- competition, how it fits into the grand scheme of things. Okay. And she knows that and she appreciates that because it just makes their product better. So, Rebecca, you rock for having an open mind about that. 
Uh, but Source Connect has been, uh, if there is an ISDN competitor that's I- internet-based, it's it's Source Connect. They, they have, because of my assistance and a couple key elements of the voiceover industry, such as a buddy of mine and a client, Steve Nafshin, who's an engineer at DG Entertainment here that records a lot of promo. Because of us, Pro, uh, Source Connect has gotten quite a, a bit of a big push into the source, uh, into the voiceover industry. So it's been around now. It's been used by some talent for over five, six years now, such as Joe Cipriano. He's a real or early adopter. And so because of that, it really does have more market penetration than anybody else by a long shot. Okay. So yes, yeah, Source Connect is not, it's not cheap. Uh, it is, it's, it's going to start you around $650. And uh, it only works with other Source Connect systems. That means another computer running Source Connect. If you want to connect to ISDN, you have to hire a bridge, which is just a service that has Source Connect running on one computer and an ISDN box, and the two of them are plugged together with a patch bay. And, uh, you know, that's basically what you have to have available to uh, make that bridge. Some of my clients are only able to get Source Connect so they actually have gone to the extent of building their own bridge or having their own ISDN hardware located someplace else so that they can bridge their own stuff. That's pretty hardcore. You have to be, you know, a little brave and uh, it never hurts to have a backup like like one of these bridging services like Out of Here or Digiphone or something. Um, but they're doing it. Now, so Source Connect is definitely the, the, next, also, the next big thing, I think. However, there are other suitors out there who are definitely giving it a run for the money. And um, the one that's gotten by far the most, um, you know, by far the most talk lately, Dan, I know you've, you've uh, all of us are talking about it, is Soundstreak. Did they talk about a lot of Fafcon? Uh, yeah, it was, it was mentioned here and there and everybody's yeah. discussing, well, what is it that we really need? Uh, yeah. you know, what's, what's going to happen when ISDN goes down Yeah, and, uh, because it will. Yeah. Uh, but re- but really, Rebecca's Rebecca Wilson from Source Connect is really the expert on talking about this. We got to get her on the show. She, we do, and we do. She, they she, did a great presentation at the Voiceover Virtual. Oh, they too. did. It was it, it was actually it was you know better than anything intriguing. I could do. Um, yeah, I mean, they explained the internet and how packets work yeah. and why ISDN works and why it's not going to work and why their thing will work and why other yeah. technologies will, are going to are going to take it over and it's going to happen. And yeah. I, it's really more a matter of adoption by the other end users production not not from from voice actors yeah. because we can we can we can access anything from anywhere right uh, and we can use source connect and soundstreak and ISDN if we have to yeah. or bridget or you know one of those things you know i i like just using the phone to tell you the truth and trust yeah. that my audio is going to be just as good as theirs yeah but um, the thing is source connect i mean i'm sorry soundstreak is uh, well you know we're, i'm not going to go into details because we are going to do a source uh, yeah here i am Sound streak a demo. We are going to get a real demo on the show where you get to see both sides of it working. Um, not just, I think Dan's going to be talent, I'll be production or something, and we'll record both sides and we'll have a real, pretty thorough demo so you can really understand how it works. Yeah. But the problem with that system is it requires the productions to pay on a per service or per use type of scenario. So it ends up costing them something more similar to what they're used to paying to use ISDN. Right. So, you know, it, I think they have a really great concept, but it's it's got a little it's, it's they got a little uphill battle trying to get productions to try it out. Yeah, um, it really it really is a marketing issue more than anything else. Yeah. The technology is all fairly sound, it's pretty and, mature, and so I I think once they figure out what's the best way to really market their product, then we'll start to see that and probably a number of competitors to that. Yeah, too, exactly. So. We also talked about Lucy Live a while ago. I think I did a brief demo with that. Lucy Live is a European um, software package that is really unique in that it doesn't just talk to other Lucy Live software. It talks to hardware boxes as well, codec boxes, like rack-mounted units made by Comrex and Telos. So if, if these things are in, in place at a production facility you're working with, like a radio station or something, then you can go directly not only from a Mac or a PC, you can go directly from a smartphone or an iPhone or an iPad with Lucy and do a, a live stream with your audio and your audio will be just as good as the space and the microphone 
and the interface you're using. The computer is not a limiting factor there. So that is one thing that sets it apart, right, from Source Connect. And the ability to start bridging uh, over ISDN is going to be available. It already is. I know John, or um, I'm sorry, uh, Dave Immer from Digiphone's already offering it. And Steve Napshin at Out of Here will very soon, as soon as actually I install it. Uh, <laughs> but it's uh, you know it's it's going to happen. It's just uh, it's it's a new service. The thing that really sets I think Source Connect apart so far is their experience in dealing with all manner of software glitches, network configuration problems, and they've worked really hard and invested in building a support network. Yep. And none of the other services out there seem to have that. Lucy and the other, and Lucy especially, Audio TX, they're kind of assuming that the user is a studio or a radio station, and it's being administered and, and you know, being used by a technical person to begin with, right? Whereas Soundstreak understands that their end users are not technical, um, but they've got to prove that their support is really rock solid, and they can get you out of a bind if you have a problem at the last minute. I think that's where they're going to have trouble. One last thing before we move on from this. Um, one surprise uh, codec that may actually end up being a poor man's version of uh, Source Connect is uh, Google Hangouts. Uh, yep. We found out recently that the codec that Google Hangouts uses, they have a new mode. It's called Studio Mode. And uh, Studio Mode is remarkably good sounding because they, they turn off the compression and all the stuff that they do on a voice to keep a voice you know, heard clearly over the background and in studio mode, but they turn all that off. They assume you have got a, you know, you've got good audio, your levels are good. They broadcast it in stereo. I'm not sure what the codec is, but Frank, uh, Frank Frederick, who's a bit of an expert in this regard said that they're using this new Opus, uh, codec, which I thought source connect, I'm sorry, Skype was going to be using. So this Opus thing is pretty, pretty kick butt. And, uh, I don't know if anybody's had any chance to experiment with it. We're going to do it at one of these time, one of these points, and play with, play around with it. But I think it has huge potential um, because its audio quality is remarkably good. Yeah. So, and, and of course, there's what I'm talking on here, Skype, and the audio on that is sounding. Skype is pretty darn good. I mean, yeah. it depends on what the end product is is really going to be. But I've done A/B tests. I have one on SoundCloud where I had Graham Spicer read something on Skype and on and Source Connect. And uh, unless you're listening really closely on headphones, it was hard to dif- differentiate. So Excellent. it's a race to see who's going to have the best free or close to free service out there that sounds pro quality, beyond broadcast quality, Anthony. Yeah, there's no <laughs> such thing as no broadcast Forget quality. Forget that broadcast quality you stuff. Watch TV at all, you know what we mean. <laughs> yeah, that's well, my spiel. All righty. And a great spiel it was. Uh, okay, so we've got lots more coming up. I've got my tip of the week coming up. And then we've got Maurice LaMarche. You got questions for him. We got questions for him. Everybody wants to know what this guy's all about. And we'll talk to him in just a little while. So stay right where you are here in East West Audio Body Shop as I take a breath. And we'll be right back. <laughs> VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in your Belinda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. And now back to the only webcast done with two cans, two geeks, and a string. East West Audio Body Shop with George Winham on his end in the West and Dan Leonard in the East. All right, we are back here at East West Audio Body Shop. 
not technical difficulties in the background. I think we have child difficulties in the background. Oh yeah, but, but that's that's part of the charm of doing this yeah, show. Yeah, it's a home, yeah. it's a home it's, show. It's a home show, you know, and it's 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 reality TV. This is the ultimate reality TV because we're just you know we're the we're the house husbands of uh, of Santa Monica and Buffalo. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, welcome back. We get still got lots to talk about here. And by the way. Somebody hit 40 last Friday, so we all have to give a quick uh, happy birthday to you, to Mr. Whittem there. Thank you, thank you. And how does 40 feel to you? <sighs> this is 40. Just watch that movie. That's pretty much right. <laughs> that, that movie, I identified with that movie other than the fact that those people lived in Brentwood in a big house. Uh, other yeah. than that, I, I had a lot of that stuff definitely hits close to home, for sure, with the kids and everything. But no, it feels good. It feels it feels good. It doesn't feel all that different. Everybody keeps telling me 30s the new or 40s the new 30 and I believe them. I believe. I, this definitely is the best year uh, years ahead of me for sure. So, I I'm certainly excited. hope so. But thanks for all the wishes, well wishes and the happy birthdays and I even got extra ones cuz my Facebook page said that my birthday was on the 10th or something. <laughs> so I got a whole right. bunch that day and then I got some on the view. It was great. It spread it out over like 10 days. So it's been, it's been wonderful. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, let's get into something else. Technical, but not yeah. te technical. I mean, it's technical, but I don't want to talk about it in a technical way. But it, it has to do with, with levels. And, 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 and it has to do, All right. That's not exactly the way I, I wanted that. It looks like work. a VU meter. It, I mean, sort of. But the thing is, is people don't even know what a VU meter is unless they were in radio. Right. Or, they, or they had a cassette deck. Yeah, you know, you know, or like a little Sony, and it had that little like meter on it that would go sort of like a, you know, on a on a you know, on a on a on a curve, and they're like, well, how does that work? Well, usually those things run on a really like, um, uh, kind of a basic limiter and stuff. Yeah, we don't want to use those things in voiceover. We want to capture our voices as natural as possible using using our proximity with the mic and the environment in which we're using it. To our advantage, not using electronics, capture ourselves as we exist. And to that end, we have this week's tip of the week. So let's stream that beautiful footage. Okay, I'll try not to be too technical here. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into the quality of our audio. My number one factor, of course, has to do with the acoustics of the room you record in. If you have that solved and have the nice dead space you should, number two is understanding and properly setting your audio levels. Now, I'll present this in as untechnical a way as I can. Many of the problems I encounter when I analyze other people's audio is undermodulation. In layman's terms, it's not loud enough. The other is overmodulation, which can cause distortion. You have to set it just right. And you can clearly see this in the waveforms your software displays as you record, or as you're editing what you've already recorded. What you're seeing here is a graphic representation of your voice's modulation over time. The bigger the waveform, the louder the signal. Now, we can measure our modulation by use of a volume meter using the dB scale. Now, dB is an abbreviation of decibels, how loud something is. Now, the audio level meter in most software platforms looks something like this, or this, or this. When setting your audio levels, do a few test runs. Increase your input knob about 5% each time until you get your recording levels to the optimum range, between minus 6 and minus 4 on the dB scale, or at about 60 or 70 percent. Let's take a look at that on an actual interface. So here we are talking into a normal interface, you know, the Focusrite iTrack Solo, which is a typical interface which uses PC or Mac or iOS, but it's the same thing, your input from your microphone here but you'll notice right here, it's flashing in the green. Now that means I'm okay. As long as you're flashing in the green, that means that you're getting a good level. 
However, if you start to turn it up too high, you will start to go into the red, like that. If it's always flashing in the red, that's too loud. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. One, two, three. You don't want that. You want to find a good medium right about there where it's flashing green and you have a nice level. Let's take a look at this on the waveform. All right, this is recording at a proper level. It looks big, but as you see, it's going up to about minus six, averaging to minus six, minus four into the yellow, goes into the red a little bit. But what a lot of people do is they try to undercompensate and they, their levels are way too low or they don't understand exactly how loud something's supposed to be. And they make it too quiet, which increases a lot of noise in the background because you've got to make everything louder to make it work better. And then there's some people who just don't understand the levels at all. And by doing this, they're distorting their audio. So you need to learn to get your audio down to a proper level, which is about there. And if you get too loud, just learn to back off the mic a little bit. If you get too soft, just get a little bit closer. But you'll see that it maintains the same consistency and same average. So in short, using that level meter, set your levels right. Green, good. Yellow, okay. Into red, okay. Always red, bad. And that's my tip of the week. Interesting. That was cool. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Now, now we're, we want to measure how many decibels Ella is actually creating in the background there. I've uh, got my view. I've got my view meter. Um, it just has a dead battery. It needs a nine volt uh, battery. It, it wouldn't matter because it, it's still. I mean, it's just the sound wave is gonna gonna move the <laughs> move the meter. I'm there. tempted to run out there and actually get a reading off of that kid. <laughs> really, Re record that for future use. You might be able. To I will. I will. <laughs> You know, screaming kid. Oh, listen to this one. But anyway, but uh, but levels are an important thing to understand. And I'm still amazed. You know, people send me audio and they need little tiny waveforms. And I'm like, yeah, I, I see there's a, something in there. And they don't understand that that's one of the most important things about creating the proper audio. So learn how to set your levels um, properly. Send us your audio and we'll say, hey, you know, you got to turn it up a little bit. Uh, and they go, what's what's gain? What's that? Guys, yeah. keep watching the show. You'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, <laughs> that's a brand new, fresh tip of the week. Straight out of the can. That was, I mean, we've really come a long way with the production values, man. Nice work. Thank you. Thank Picture, you very much. Picture, sound quality, everything was great. Hey. Very nice. Guys, you got to practice what you preach. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, level, level setting, I mean, we always talk about this, but... Um, it's easier said than done. You know, it does take practice and a lot of it has to do with your skill as a voice actor. Also Absolutely. your ability to, um, maintain volume, despite the fact that maybe your energy level has to rise, raise and lower. Um, you can still sound angry or sad or timid without changing your volume dramatically, you know, but that does take practice. So. Absolutely. You know, and speaking of practice, we have a well practiced, expert on on his field mm -hmm. and that is voice acting and animation and all sorts of other stuff great guy emmy award winner maurice lamarche will be right with us after this amazing message so don't go away we'll be right back
VoiceOver Extra, the VoiceOver Industries online news, education, and resource center 24 7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how to articles for VoiceOver success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free VoiceOver Industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi monthly webinars on all topics of VoiceOver, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. Voice so what else are you planning on doing tonight? Hmm, I thought so. Now back to East West Audio Body Shop with Dan and George. And we are back. Lucky you, because you're lucky enough to be with us with a great guest. Let's just start this off. Maurice LaMarche, welcome to East Hello. West Audio Body Shop. I am so yeah. here. Thank you, oh, Dan. Thank you, we, George. We have waited so long to have you with us. And see, now you're not intimidated anymore because oh. we, we talk technology, but we don't talk geek. Well, you know, that was my fear in coming on the show. I, I mean, I'd caught uh, bits and pieces of it before, and, and I thought, well, it's a very tech-oriented show, and it's for people that do the, the home studio thing. And, and, and I'm like the last guy on the block where the most home studio I get is, you know, my, my iPhone, you know, my <laughs> iPhone and an Apogee mic. Is actually right over there. Uh huh. Get it? Hang on. I mean, that's that's you. You would be blown away with how good a quality you can actually get with that setup. I have gotten, right. I have gotten so many jobs with this, and this, this, and this, and mm -hmm. that, <laughs> and and a quiet room. You know, I use my closet upstairs, and 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 naked. So there's no clothing noise. <laughs> we didn't need to hear that. Campaign. <laughs> completely naked in my closet using an Apogee mic, twisted wave, and 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 my iPhone. And I don't know. I don't even know how to mix. I have no idea how to EQ anything. I just right. You don't send have to. the agent. They they do it. I'm I'm very technically challenged in this way. So it's all about mic. Your technique, of course. Your your skill with the mic. How you place it. And it's about the room you're in. And you get right. those two right, you know, the sound quality and a good mic like that, it's going to sound great. Yeah. So don't tell us you don't have a home studio because I know a yeah. lot of people making a lot of money next to their pants and their belts. And Is it just me or did Dan get staticky? Dan got staticky. But you know what? You know, while he, I think what he said was, don't tell me I don't have a home studio. What I want to say is, don't tell the IRS I don't have a home <laughs> Dan, wiggle some wires, Dan. It sounds like all of a sudden, uh, uh, something went scratchy at the worst possible moment. Yeah, it's definitely on your end. <laughs> well, that, of course, that's the way. That's why one of our themes on the show, Marie, uh, Maurice, is called "Is it Every Week It's Apollo 13. 13 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you hear me now? We hear you. It's just yeah. very dirty, yeah. very dirty and scratchy. Oh, okay. It's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on variety. I, I mean, I got no. It's you know, not your internet. It's an analog audio. Like, plug and unplug some stuff. Oh, Just go around the loop. This is why I love George. He knows this stuff. <laughs> well, like up, turning the mic. No, it's really distorted. Still, unplug the uh, eye track and plug it back in. Maybe it's that. I'm not using the eye track. Okay, then start unplugging and plugging stuff back in. Uh, okay, I got it. <laughs> I, I have an actual idea here. Let's change. Let's just wild. change inputs here. Right, can you hear me over here now? Yeah, that's clean. See, yes. now that's clean. All right, so here's the reason why. Because <laughs> and I bet it's clean now, right? Nope. No. Nope. It might be the mic. It might. It could be the mic. It could well, be the mic. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're just going to change everything. Here. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna move all this stuff over here. <laughs> 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 this is why we do the show live we love to show our, our troubleshooting skills under fire as the whole point of doing this show live now actually the real reason we do the show live is because we're too lazy and we don't want to have to edit a show afterward that's right that was a, that was the impetus for doing the show totally live that was my idea all right because i knew i'd be the one who has to end up editing it all right can you hear me now yeah it's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> Way to improvise. Figure. <laughs> it's no, not one. I can't read my notes. Wait a second. I can't. You it know what? I'm gonna get I'm gonna go and get naked and, right. and bring this up to my closet. 
<laughs> Let's do it. The way I, the way I auditioned okay. for the last big promo campaign, which if I said the name of the network, they'll never hire me again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. And it ends the scene. Anyway, gang. <laughs> What's going on? Okay. Here we Thanks are. for joining us. Where yeah, the heck, so where are you, man? Sorry for the interruption. You're in okay. L.A., but where are you in L.A.? Pardon me? Where are you in the Los Angeles area? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the Brentwood area. Brentwood, yeah. We're not too far away from each other then. No, not at all. Not at all. In fact, I was just down uh, at a studio doing some uh, stuff for, uh, this week is the big uh, Big sales meeting for for Lexus. Yeah, and, uh, let me say that the way I should be saying it: the big sales meeting for Lexus. And so, <laughs> oh, I recognize that voice. <laughs> there you go. So uh, I was down at a place called uh, um, Shoreline Studios, which is only a stone's throw. I learned just an hour ago from your house. I could have come over and done this from your house, Jordan, oh. the camera. But uh, this is the big sales meeting. So I was down recording a bunch of intros for uh, the big the big wigs at uh, Toyota and Lexus. And uh, so, so yeah, so I'm one of those guys that still runs around town in my car, in my Lexus, and, uh, and, uh, and, and goes to studios. And, and I, I kind of like it that way. I, 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 for me, I like to interface with an engineer. I like to, you know, make eye contact with a creative so I can really tell what he wants from me. You know, and, and uh, you know, sometimes a little... A little simple thing from from the director that you know a little look like don't worry it's not you it's 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 you know the writers or whatever you know whether it's a cartoon a commercial for me that's that's how I work best you know eye to eye so I mean I'm not saying I'll never get a home studio I mean I've got as I say my my own little makeshift home studio but uh, I like I like getting on the road and seeing people you know because uh, otherwise if I could do this out of my house I'd never leave here it's a nice house. Well, I, and that's that's the best part about having a home studio is you can you can just go do that. But anyway, but uh, I also like people. I don't I don't want to I don't want to be locked in. You know what I'm saying? And my thing is, if I had one, I wouldn't leave. I'd say just dial me up, and I'd be like it'd be five days before I you know bathed, left the house. I just do all my work out of the house and, and go. I wonder why I feel so lonely. Anyway, <laughs> it's a lament. To, yeah, it's the lament yeah. of the voice actor. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, welcome exactly. to my world. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you you have had a great career, and and you're st- and you're in the prime of your career, and maybe it'll just keep going up from here. You know, that's that's the most important thing. But you've won two I, I Emmy awards. Nothing. I count on absolutely nothing. I'm I'm so blessed, but I I I know as anyone in our business has to, can end tomorrow. You know, I, I'm very fortunate. I just signed a nice extended contract with Lexus. So I do know I've got work for the next two years. With or at that. least a car. And, uh, and they give me a very nice car to drive around. Yes. Uh, Excellent. So, well, well they, 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 I mean, that's not even a negotiating point. They want me in their car and, and I want to be in their car. I'm so happy to be part of advertising something that I believe in. It's a great car. So are you and, saying that Jeff Bridges doesn't drive a Hyundai around? <laughs> I have no idea what Jeff's doing. <laughs> my, son, my son flew to New York next to him last summer, and I, I actually was like, I said, did you, so did you tell him that your dad's the voice of Lexus? He said, nah, we just talked about the big Lebowski, and then I left him alone. Yeah. <laughs> what else is there to talk I, about? I, yeah. I actually wanted to know if, 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 if Bridges drives a uh, Hyundai. But um, he, he does a great job on those commercials too. He's, he's yeah. I, I think all the all the people doing uh, car stuff right now are great. I think Downey's doing a great job for uh, for uh, Nissan, and I think I think John Hamm's doing a terrific job for Mercedes, and and Chris Pine for for BMW. You know, um, as voice actors, I think they're all doing a terrific job. You know, yeah, yeah. So, and it's and it's fun to hear their voices on those spots. You know, there's lots of people out there like, well, I I could be doing that, but the reason they're doing it. Is because they're great actors and they just bring some life to those spots, and that's the most important thing. Now you've won a couple of Emmys, and and I want to hear what is that like to hear your name announced and to go up there and grasp that thing, and you know, and 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 thank your mother-in-law and all the other things that you can think of at the last second. I, I'd be I'd be a phony and a liar if I didn't tell you it was one of the great thrills of my life, and it also was the most unexpected thrill of my life and the second time as much as the first because the first time i thought you know once i gathered my 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 wits about me this is a fluke so the next year when i got nominated again i went well you know not gonna happen again that was like a 
I don't know, some hanging chat or something like that. When I won the second, <laughs> my first thought was, wow, two flukes in a row. You know, <laughs> two mistakes in a row. But, I, you know, it's like, it, it, you, 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 you know, your, your, your heart quickens and your breath, you know, you take a second to catch your breath and you, you say expletives. You go, holy, you know what? And you know what? <laughs> And, you know, thank God I remember the names of, you know, Matt Groening and David Cohen, and I remember the yeah. son. And, and, and at the time, my, uh, my ex uh, was there, and we were, you know, friendly, and, and um, so she came out to cheer me on, and that was, that was great. And, you know, and, and to thank the writers, and then also the, also the folks at Fox, and, and it, was, it was a real thrill. And, and I thought, I felt, wow, I'm pretending to be a real showbiz guy up here, thanking the head of Fox. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, but it, it's it, it was it was it was fantastical, and it was also uh, just 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 an incredible uh, blessing. And you know, I made a joke when I went up there. I said, you know, this is really messing with my low self esteem. And <laughs> and it, but it was it was true. I mean, I, I got to say, I've sort of held my head a little higher. Uh, I don't mean it in any braggadocio kind of way, but you know, when something like that happens, I sort of go, well, I guess I'm good at my job. I guess I'm. I guess I'm okay. You know. I guess they like Sally Fields. I guess Sally Fields was right. They like me. They really like me. You know. Yeah. So I felt a little bit better about myself. You know. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get there? How did how have you gotten to become Maurice Lamarche? Aside from being born in Toronto and and being part of this great Canadian contingent of entertainers and stuff that we were alluding to earlier. How did you get to where you are? How did you find your way into into animation and now breaking out into even more interesting parts of voiceover? You know, it's an interesting question. I never thought of myself as being Maurice LaMarche. Um, what a question. What a concept, huh? I'm just this guy. You know, Will Wheaton has a great, his descriptor on his uh, Twitter account is, I'm just this guy, you know? And that's the yeah. way I feel. I'm just this guy, you know? I'm just this guy who... Those, you know, wacky voices, this is the same stuff that, you know, they told me, you better buckle down, young man. You're not going to be able to make a living doing silly voices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that we got that out of the way. <laughs> really? It's hard work. It's Feel better now? <laughs> I'll tell you, yeah, all kidding aside. The day that, and, and I, ho I know it sounds like I'm jumping on the heels of a recent Brian Cranston um, video that's making the rounds, but this, I took this on years and years ago. There's a wonderful director who used to be a stand-up comedian. His name is Mike Binder. He's a Detroit guy. And uh, Mike, when we were comics together, told me, don't go out there to have a good show. Because I was pacing backstage. We were appearing together in Vancouver, B.C. At, the, at Punchlines Comedy Club. And I was pacing back and forth. And he was like, what are, you, what are you so nervous about? I said, I want to have a good show. I want to make sure I you know, do all my, my stuff. And he said, don't go out there and worry about having a good show. Go, worry, go out there and worry about helping those people. Take what you, the, the God-given, whatever talent you have, and go out there and help those folks. There's a guy somewhere in that audience who had a crappy day at work today. You take away your talent and you help him have a laugh today so he can <clears throat> forget about, you know, all the crappy thoughts he's having about quitting and, you know, maybe his wife's ready to leave him. That's what your job is. And when you go on an audition for a commercial, your job is to make the casting director's day a little bit. Your right. job is to help. And so... The day I adapted that, I started working. I know, and Cranston says the same thing in his video, but I swear to you, I've been saying this for 20 years. The day I adapted the idea that I'm here to help people do their project, you know, I'm even there to help my agent make his commission, is the day I started working more because it gets me out of my own head. It gets me out of that thing in my head that says, oh, you're not going to get the job, you're not going to have a I don't know, there's 70 people better than you. It shuts all that up. It's all that up if I just look at it as, how can I help these people do their show? How can I help these people make their commercial? How can I give this casting director a laugh, even if I'm not going to get to do the, the spot? So that, that's, really, that's really it. And just, you know, showing up on time, which that's the toughest thing for me, especially with LA traffic. I'm still kind of Mr. Five Minutes Late. It's the one thing I would say, 
kids do as I say, not as I do. Show up for- <laughs> it's <laughs> it's at the end of the day, it's a service. If I had ever learned to manage my time a little better and not do the dishes before I leave the house, you know, we- <laughs> Because I'm a little compulsive about that. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it is a service, no matter what level you're working at, no matter how little or how much you're getting paid, you're still providing a service. And right. Wasn't that something that came up at Fafcon, Dan? Somebody oh, mentioned absolutely. that they learned about the gold nugget was, don't even think about what you're getting paid when you, when you start recording that script. That has to be the furthest from your mind. No, it's it's always about what what am I supposed to do with this? How do I make it work for the client? How do I communicate my message? And and that and that's the most important thing. And the money just comes because you do it, and because you do it that way. It's, I think the other thoughts choke off your your creative flow. Any oh, ideas that you're going to have that you're going to bring that your special uniqueness to it? You know, the thing that's only you and only you can do. I think when you start worrying about, geez, am I good enough? Geez, how much am I making for this? Geez, do they like me? Do they love me? I think that just does this to you. So, you know, I know we're not, I'm not coming at this from a particularly tech place, but it's an adi- it's the, I think the attitude's almost more important than, than the technology, you know? Yep. Speaking of technology, am I, am I clear again here? Yes. You are. What'd you do? This is it's amazing. Mag- it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's it, in my house, you know, computers go bad. It's like, dad, my computer's going bad. I'm coming. Oh, it fixed itself. It heard me coming. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, know what, they know what's happening. <laughs> anyway, well, of course, now, now my mouse doesn't work, but, you know, as long as you can hear me, that's the most you're important. You're fine. This, this magic mouse is just going bananas. These on me things tonight. stink. Your mouse, your mouse isn't working. Then I know a mouse who can take over the world. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about about you and and, your, and and I guess you can call him your partner, Rob Paulson. How how long have you guys been working together? Uh, we just celebrated the twentieth anniversary of Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain, which was part of Animaniacs. Right. This summer at um, at Comic Con, but I truly it was it was uh, just last month. So twenty years, Rob and I have really been working side by side. Creating those characters and 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 reliving them even after the show's gone off the air, and I just love the guy. I mean, I, there's nobody I work with with more sort of give and take and simpatico. We complete each other's senses. It's it's a great relationship, and I yeah. count him among like the the three most talented people in all of show business. Really? Maybe in any business. <laughs> wow, who was cast first on uh, on the show? Let's, uh, According to what I've been told, although recently something popped up on the web that said they wanted Patrick Stewart, um, <laughs> for the last 20 years is I was first and only choice for Brain, and then they, they took an entire day of auditions, and then Rob auditioned the next day. I think he was first on day two, and they went, we found Pinky. Wow. But I walked in and did that, that Orson Welles thing that I've been obnoxiously doing uh, <laughs> between takes for you know about five years at that point. And they, they said, they said that's the brain. Oh, my God. Orson Welles. What a choice. And I saw, I looked at this, the, the model sheet for the brain and went, oh, they've drawn me an Orson Welles mouse to play. Isn't that nice? Mm-mm. Not based on Orson Welles. Brain was based on Tom Minton. Who's oh. A, yeah. Who's a director or who's a writer at, uh, at Animaniacs and, uh, and was on Tiny Toons as well. He looks just like the brain. But I didn't see that. I didn't know Tom. So I just did Wells, and they went, that's it. So that's apparently just, I was the first and only audition. It goes to show you, it's like you bring your thing to the table, and you never know that that's right. what they're looking for that day. And you could come out of left field with something like that, and boom, that was it. And I didn't th- you know, the other, the other thing, in addition to that, that the, the attitude of bringing, you know, service to what you're doing is, the other thing is realizing that, Whatever you could do to get yourself the job, you left in the room. When that door swung shut behind you and you walked out, that's it. And I, I, I've trained myself not to think about auditions ever again. I go and have lunch uh, or, or whatever, or move on to the next thing. I don't obsess. And if I could say that to anybody watching who's you know, starting the business, let it go. As soon as you're done with the audition, let it go. Go do something else. Really? How, how often, uh, how many auditions do you do in a day? I mean, how, do, how many things does your agent send you? Is it a constant flow? Is it a day-to-day thing? Is there specific say, things that they're trying to send to you? Well, since, since booking Lexus, 
Uh, there really is a sort of a, a concerted effort to, to keep keep that thing, that voice, which is really my, my most honest voice. Um, in other words, closest to me. It's really just my, it's kind of my just most relaxed voice, you know, if I just relax and talk like this. Uh, it's, my, it's my bedroom voice, I guess. I don't know, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's a quiet, it's a quiet version of me. So there's a concerted effort to kind of hold that back. So I'm not reading as much commercially, but when I was reading commercially, I probably read for three things, three three auditions a day, three or four things a day. So twenty auditions a week, and you know, so it's, you, know, you you go a while without without booking one. You know, that that, that it just happens. But then right. you hit a you hit a Lexus or something like that, and it's it's all it's all good. You know. Yeah. Well, like you said, you're in you're in great company with uh, with some of those other some of those other people you mentioned. So uh, you are at the top of the game with uh, with those sorts of things. But uh, what other type of stuff do you audition for? I mean, aside, st- still for animation or for uh, other commercials or well, for television television work? If I read for commercials, I read character stuff. You know, as I said, I keep uh, you know there's things that aren't a conflict. You know, I, I, I did a, a hospital spot last year. You know that sort of compassionate read. Um, uh, I, I had, um, and I think I still do occasionally. Have, it's I get holding fees for it, so they haven't cut it loose yet. Uh, for uh, Sub Zero fridges, I have I have a serious spot for Sub Zero. As long as there's Sub Zero, food will have a delicious future. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been two can Sam. That's my, the longest job I've ever held. I've had two can Sam since uh, Paul Fries died in 1986. Oh, wow. So, Follow your nose. Follow your nose. It's always nose. And on Scoop Group cereal with natural orange, lemon, and cherry flavors. <laughs> That's 1987, so we're in, we're in 2013. So, you know, holy moly, it's 26 years. I've never held a job that long. You know, that's, that's, that's some job security, I guess, but only retrospectively. <laughs> you, I know I can't hold it this long. You, I don't have the contract with Fruit Loops. Believe it or not. You, you and Pat Duke and all the other people that play like cereal and food mascots should right. do something together. He's the Kool Aid Man. I don't know. <laughs> I think it could be something really funny, like the Teenage Hunger Force type. I don't know, something That's like funny. that. That is really? funny. I tried to do a, a Toucan Sam uh, cartoon show pilot once, and Jason Alexander and Wayne Knight played two hippopotamuses. This oh, was a Seinfeld. <laughs> so, uh, that, you know, it, it didn't go anywhere. Oddly enough, it was about uh, Toucan wanting to uh, to uh, promote healthy eating with the kids. So, yeah, who would have guessed? Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you I, this, though, Fruit Loops yeah. is actually they're lowering the sugar content little by little in Fruit Loops every year. Yeah, imperceptibly. So it's it's less and less sugar every year. That's good, but not the flavor. That's right. It's training. It's taste bud training. That's right. You just have well, to follow your news. <laughs> That's right. Well, we've we've got we've got lots of questions from the audience. Unfortunately, I can't see any of them because my mouse is dead. All right. Well, I'll, I'll be happy to field the questions while I go find some batteries. No problem. I'll be right back. No problem. Go do that, and I, I will. Uh, run, get batteries. See, I've got I've got a USB mouse also plugged into my computer. See, I'm I'm always prepared. <laughs> so you're, you're you're wired in. No, I, these I love these little magic mice. These smooth plastic topped uh, magic, you know, the thing by Apple. Right. They, they work wonderfully, but yeah, they're they're flaky. I don't know what it is. So you got to have a USB mouse around. No, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. You plug right into the. Yeah. So um, a couple questions that uh, sure. have been flowing in. We've got a couple good ones, and if one of these is something you've already answered, just say I already answered that because I haven't been listening. Um, <laughs> no. I already answered that. Okay. <laughs> um, first, we have to Tremaine Kendrick Mosley. He says, "How's it working with Rob? And had there been any discussions about new?" Pinky and the Brain episodes, and can you tell us without having to kill us? Well, as 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 I said, working with Rob has been and always will be a pleasure. We, we've started doing these evenings with Pinky and the Brain. Uh, we've done one or two of them around. Uh, we were in uh, Atlanta, and we were doing a Comic Con there. Uh, oh, like a live time. live stage. Uh, and we, did, we we just did a we did an evening. We showed episodes. We. We sang, we danced, we did a live reading. We 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 took out the the script for uh, "You Said a Mouseful," which is the tongue twister episode, mm, and uh, yeah. we we played half the episode, and then we brought up people from the audience to be in the episode with us, and we just read with them like a like oh, a radio. Cool. Play. Jeez, that's so a we've had a lot of fun. Rob is a, an incredible creative force. Yeah, and uh, he's doing his own series of podcasts now called Talking Tunes on iTunes. They're great, yeah. Find it and. Um, 
So it's 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 fun. There there are, as far as I know, no plans for new Pinky and the Brain episodes. Yeah. Uh, the rights are still so, you know, uh, you know, Warner Brothers has got half, Spielberg's got half. Nobody wants to make fifty cents on the mm. dollar for a hundred percent of the effort. And and I hate to say it, but even if they did do a Pinky and the Brain movie, they'd probably not cast us. You know, they'd probably go with celebrities, which. <laughs> All right, oh, everything's boy. working here again. My mouse is now operational. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I and I probably solved all sorts of other problems. What's, the batteries it said fine, but what, hey. what's with the Stratocaster back there? Stratocaster. You I see a Strat back there. That's my oh son. yeah, look at that. Son Jonathan Stratocaster. He's uh Oh, uh, okay. T, TJ wanted TJ one of our audience was observant. He saw it. And I predict his songs will fill your homes within the next Five to seven years. I think he's 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 an incredible songwriter. He's at the Musicians Institute here. I'm glad I don't have to do the commercial for them. Did you just hear I messed that up? Musicians Institute. <laughs> what do you have in that bottle? Institute here in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and um, and he's that's it's a college program, and uh, he's doing fantastic. So yeah, he's a talented kid. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, well, some, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a some one of your one of your city mates there, Pat's voice in Toronto, Ontario, Toronto. I gotta say, I gotta say it right, Toronto, Toronto. Toronto. Okay, Toronto. Um, the the place that wasn't burning when you were growing up. Exactly. Uh, but well, uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, do you have an agent in Toronto? I do not. No, I I don't have a Canadian agent. My uh, Jeff Danis at uh, DPN Talent. Um, is uh, he handles me worldwide, and he has handled uh, some Canadian stuff for me. So yeah, but all inquiries go to Jeff. All right, uh, our good friend in San Francisco, J. S. Gilbert, asks: Was Paul Fries an inspiration at all? Well, Fries was an inspiration in that he, he, you know, I mean, I loved his Toucan Sam. I mean, I remember, I remember them when I was a little kid. You know, and so that whole follow your nose thing, I, you know, I, 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 was, I was so sad when he died. I got to be in his second last uh, Fruit Loop spot. I played, actually, I played a Doc Brown kind of character. So, look, who can, my bird bot can spit out fruit flavors just like you, sniff out fruit flavors just like you, you know. And Paul didn't record there. He recorded at home on his island. But um, he was sick that day. So, you know, but yeah, he was, he was an inspiration. Definitely all those, uh, you know, uh, June Foray and, and uh, Bill Scott, uh, all those classic, you know, uh, Dawes and of course Mel Blanc, uh, all those, all that, that community from the 1950s and 60s, big inspirations for me as a kid. Absolutely. Um, Devox asks, what kind of practice do you do when you're not working? I mean, it's always important because as professionals, we always try to work on our craft. What do you do to work on your craft when you're not at the microphone and, and making money at it? Well, I, I, one of the things I do, I mean, if you're talking about like, you know, warming up my voice or keeping my voice in shape, uh, I, I sing. And I, I don't sing particularly well, but I sing in the car, I sing I sing, you know, scales, and I'll sing along to songs and, and things like that. That you know, just it just keeps the voice, you know, tight. Um, you know, I, I walk around imitating sounds all day long, or people that I, if I hear an interesting voice in a restaurant, if I'm eating alone and I hear a, an accent, I'll 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 sit there and listen, and then I'll just start doing the accent as they're talking to their friend. I'll uh, just every Food, wood, you know, or whatever. <laughs> I'm just always keeping, keeping my ears open and, and just and just working my chops. And people, you know, may think I'm I'm they may think I'm a dreamer. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but you know, it seems a little crazy, but hey, it keeps me working. <laughs> That's right. Crazy is good in this business. Absolutely. Well, we got a bunch of other questions, but we we have to do a little bit of an ad lib here. We want to include you in on it because okay. we ha- we have a great sponsor who's been with us since the beginning. Harlan Hogan. You know Harlan? Do I know Harlan? Is that name yeah. ring a bell to you? Are you asking me, do I know Harlan? Yes. I, I Never know. heard of him. Okay. <laughs> Harlan Hogan is <laughs> owner of Voice Over Essentials. If you need something for your home voiceover studio, like you do, Maurice. I mean, I mean, if you needed to get something for your home studio, all you'd have to do is go over to Voice Over Essentials, and he's got everything you need. 
Does he, he have that, that? Does he have that 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 the eggshell foam rubber stuff for the door and that sort of thing? Does he? Do, or is he only electronic? Well, no, he's he can you can get access to anything, yeah. anything you need. I mean, if he doesn't have it, you don't need it. Yeah, anything I need. Acoustical treatment, uh, microphones, porta interfaces, booth, porta booth, porta booth, the porta booth. You have a porta booth? The porta booth. Yes, I don't have one, but I know what they are. Okay, well, that's Harlan Hogan invented that, oh, and you can great. you can get that at Voiceover Essentials. Bet you, now, now you didn't know that. Now you know to go get one. How do I find VoiceOver Essentials? Well, all you have to do is go over to VoiceOverEssentials.com. That's what I needed to know, the dot .com, because he could have been a dot .org. Yeah. Or dot .net. Dot .net. Or but dot is. .com, Jerry. Or dot right, .ca. Dot .ca. <laughs> <laughs> but Thanks. anyway. It's it, dot .com, George, not a dot .net. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but uh, if you need that kind of stuff, whether Maurice needs it, whether John Hamm needs it, whether anybody needs it, you can go over to VoiceOverEssentials.com where he's got the porta booths and he's got he's got the uh, the the uh, Harlan Hogan VO1A voiceover microphone. That's designed right. for voiceover. Fabulous, and of course the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones. But not just his signature series stuff. You can get all sorts of other stuff. But we really want you to go try the Porta Booth, the Porta Booth Plus, the Porta Booth Pro, and now the Porta Booth Plus, which comes with this more great, great carry case. More pluses. More pluses. Because I took <laughs> I took this down to down to Florida last week, and my 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 four sixteen fit perfectly right in here, and uh, you know, and then all my other stuff fit in over here. It and I had a Porta Booth. It worked great. How well did you do through system. security, man? I just came through security in uh, in uh, in New York, JFK, and I've they learned. they gutted my bat, my suit, my case, which is full of equipment. You know, it I, just gutted the thing. I well, I, I actually I actually checked it through in my suitcase. This thing actually fit in my suitcase. Impressive. Impressive. And of course, when I opened up oh, my suitcase. Impressive. Yes, I, I actually when I opened it up to get some some cords out, I found a little note from TSA saying, "We looked in here." So <laughs> that always creeps me out, man. Yeah, yeah well, I, you know, I don't I don't keep any of the the nasty stuff in there, so it really, really didn't bother me. <laughs> but anyway, you keep the nasty stuff down. Um, <laughs> so it's over here on the bookshelf. There you go. <laughs> okay, so. Anyway, thanks, Harlan. Harlan, <laughs> yeah. you've been there, you've been there for us from the very beginning. We really appreciate your support. Right, and now we're going to send Maurice over there. That's right, because he's got to get his own home studio. I need to do something. You demand. Right. Well, you, you do have your closet, and if it's working for you, go for it. As George and I like to say, but occasionally I want to come out of the closet, so this is good. That's that's but why I'm the same way. But exactly. as George and I like to say, nobody needs to see where they make the sausage. That's right. Only what it <laughs> sounds like. <laughs> Should we nail through a few more questions before we, we uh, should. before what Maurice we turns into a pumpkin? I love the Sorry. name Maurice. My n- my middle name is Maurice, by the way. Oh, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, neat. Yes, it is. I was named after Maury Muleisen, the guitar player from uh, Jim Croce's band. Oh. Way back in the they died like a month before I was born. So oh. I love it. Thank you for thank you for being named Maurice. Was he, was he um was he a friend of your your folks or something? My uh, aunt, my aunt, uh, dated him. When I was pre in utero, you know, in utero, they were dating. So, right. yeah, and that's oh wow. Anyway. Where'd you get Where'd you get Maurice? Was it a family name? No, I, my, I was a but my my parent my father. Yeah, well, okay. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> my three, father come on. was actually Maurice Guy Lamarche. Huh. But and in fact, there's a baby picture. It's a sepia tone baby picture from 1934, I think, that has Maurice. Cisson, uh, not Cisson. Cisson. Uh, what's what's the French for month? Come on, American people, tell the Canadian how to say month in French. <laughs> where's where's Liz Denesher when you need her? It said anyway. Um, it's Maurice at six months in French, and and uh, you know he told me yeah, they called him Maurice until he was about two years old, and all of a sudden somebody in the family said I don't like I don't like Maurice. Let's call him Guy, his middle name. So so I'm I'm actually Maurice the second. Huh. Uh, but 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 apparently uh, it was because my grandmother loved Maurice Chevalier. 
So that's the, where the, that's where. It came oh, from. cool! Um, Thanks, man. I wish it could have been Maurice Rock and Richard. That's a little more macho than the guy who sings <laughs> "Thank You, Little Girls." That's where the Maurice comes from. I'm named that. <laughs> thanks Excellent. for that. Thanks for that. Yes, uh, Frank Baum asks, "What fine arts training would you recommend to grow in the right direction for performance?" Well, first, I want to thank Frank Baum for writing uh, "The Wizard of Oz." Yes, we we remind him of that all the time. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> um, fine arts training. I mean, I would recommend any kind of theater class. Any kind of uh, whether it's uh, improv is good, um, you know, scene study, learning how to break down characters, take a writing class, uh, take, take a class in comedy writing. I mean, understanding what makes characters funny from the writer's end of things also helps you build characters. You know, the most important thing I was taught, that comedy doesn't happen unless something goes wrong. So you always need to find that thing going wrong, both externally and internally with the character and his reaction to it. Um, but any and all acting classes, because voice acting is acting. We're just not worried about the hair, lighting, makeup, a little bit about hitting the mark in terms of, like, you know, distance from the mic. But, you know, it's just, it's an acting job without all the extraneous BS, you know. Yeah. Actually, very true. Uh, Sandy McKee asks, what character would you love to voice? That I haven't, and and, and, yeah, and, and then dovetail onto that because Tremaine Kendrick Mosley also asked, "What part did you miss out on? That would you have liked to have gotten?" It's a, it's a two part question. Mr. President. Hmm. I, I try. I mean, I so try not to dwell on in you know any kind of yeah. regret musings. Um, yeah, I came close. I'll tell you what. I came close on. Well, I don't know if I came close. I think I did the best audition of my entire career for the Batman. The, the show that ended up starring Reno Romano as as um, young Bruce Wayne in his first, you know, when he first began his career, and the the breakdown specifically said, "Do not do Mark Hamill's Joker," and I probably went to like this. I, I decided to just really use my acting chops and go to this dark, crazed place of loss and 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 just. You know, decide, I decided the Joker had an even bigger tragedy in his life that made him snap, that, that was bigger than Batman's. And, you know, it was, it was almost a lecturish kind of read. I, you know, and, and I was really proud of that. I thought I did a friggin', you know, motion picture audition for this cartoon show. And it didn't go to me. You know, I went to Kevin Michael Richardson, and I love Kevin. And he did a great job with the character all, all and 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 that's and that's great but that's the one where i just sort of i wanted that part i wanted to play the joker and i wanted to play him real scary real dark and real and yet funny um so i guess that's a you know it's a it's sort of answers both questions really really have you done any video games i have in fact i got to do a batman video game uh, uh, the uh, arkham um arkham city i played uh, uh-huh. I played Mr. Freeze. I succeeded the late Michael Ancera uh, as Mr. Freeze. So um, he he was a he was a very robotic kind of sound. And make no mistake, Batman, this does not make us friends. You know, everything to him had that certain chill. That is chilly. <laughs> You know. <laughs> I, I, f- I find it fascinating. Mr. Freeze is always German. It was like I remember on the TV show it was Otto Preminger, right? And then in the movie, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, so, told us, they said stay away from that for this, for this version of him. So I really tried to stay close to Michael and Sarah's thing. Um, so, you know, th- there was not this to him. There was simply this, a soft-spokenness and a sense that all I want to do is save my wife, Nora. You know, so <laughs> he's actually a sympathetic villain because... Everything he does, every crime he commits is to get the resources so that he can cure his wife and take her out of the cryogenic state that she's in. Right. So I, you can't hate Freeze too much. This is true. This is true. Well, Maurice, we can't hate you at all because you actually had the gazungas to come on our show finally. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm <laughs> thrilled. I, you know, and and, and uh, I've been a fan for, for a long time. And I got to give a shout out to Diane Merritt. She's the one who said, come on, you've got to really, do the show. And I kept saying to her, but I'm not, I'm not a tech guy. No, do the show. Okay, so. Diane, we love you. We do indeed. She's awesome. Yeah, she's she's a lovely lady. Very fun. Very nice, yeah. too. 
Yes. So a big shout out to her. Well, we shout out to her all the time because we love having her around. But we especially love her now because she convinced you that it was time to join us here at East West Audio Body Shop. It's been a great but, time. I'll come back anytime you want me to. So thank you. Next time we'll make you come over to my little hovel at the end of town. Absolutely. Love to hang in your hovel. <laughs> love to hang in your hovel. Your hovel. There's got to be a song in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway. Maurice LaMarche, thanks for being little with bird, us. Little hobble. Uh, all right, guys. Anyway. Have a great night, man. All right. Take care. Bye. Wow, that was worth the wait. Oh, man. These are some of the nicest freaking people who have the best careers. They're, they're so, I mean, you know, there's something to be said for, of course, you're nice, you're successful. But that's just not how it works He's a lot, real. Folks. He's a regular guy. I know a lot of very successful people in this business, and they're not like Maurice. I mean, that's just, um, what a great guy. It's that Toronto thing. All the people from Toronto. Yeah, it's Canadians. Canada. I know. Yeah. So nice. See, but see, I, I live close to Canada. I can almost spit on Canada. Canada from adjacent. That's right. <laughs> Five miles from here. Anyway. Um, Man. So what, what, do we have, what, what do we have left here? Well, we're what running is, a little later we're, than we're, usual. Yeah, we're an hour but, and 10 yeah. minutes. We 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 t- we said that we would keep Maurice on as long as we could. That's right. When we get a guy, keep, keep like, things interesting. Oh man, we get someone like him. When you're not going to let him go that easy. That's right. He was great. <laughs> he was great. Anyway, we have a few announcements. Yeah, a couple of things going on. Like next week, if you're here this week and you had fun, wait till next week. We're going to do not a Google Hangout. We're going to do a Ghoul Google Hangout. Did you notice that? <laughs> no. Nice. I I came up with that. Oh. Uh. We're going to have our, our, our monthly Google Hangout, only we're going to have a costume party because next week, of course, is Halloween. Mm-hmm. So all you have to do to be on our Google Hangout is RSVP at uh, ewabshop at gmail.com. Yes, JS, you have to come. Uh, <laughs> and because um, I, I can't wait to see what you, you ha- he has to dress up, dress up as Mondo. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, that'd that, be awesome. that would be good. Will you do that for us, JS? <laughs> uh, and uh, everybody come as their favorite character that they've ever wanted to play. How does that sound? And we will have we'll have a Google Hangout, and you know you can ask us questions. We can make fun of you, and that's the best part of it all. Uh, so, <laughs> ewabshop at gmail dot com. Make a reservation, but you, anybody can watch the show because it'll be streamed, of course, here on Ustream and on our website. And uh, but ewabshop at gmail.com. RSVP say, you want to be on our ghoul, ghoul hangout next week. You got to spell it right or you're not in. That's right. (laughs) G-O-U-L-G-L-E. Also, coming up in November, Fred Malibut's going to be with us. I know. He plays the father in a world. I have not yet seen it. Nothing comes to Buffalo. We're still waiting for, you know, for Gone with the Wind to show up here. It came know? to Pennsylvania, so it'll make it to Buffalo. I know it made it to Maine. Nancy German was saying, really? I saw it, saw it in Portland, Maine. I think she's in Portland. Well, w- what else is there in Maine? Of course, now all the people in Maine are now making fun of me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but Fred's going to be. Now, there's a great voice. You know, you know, a little bit, a little bit different from what Maurice does. This guy has been, you know, he sounds a lot like, um, what's his name on, uh, on frontline. Um, I can, I never remember his name. Um, Don't ask me, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm you only watch the public television. I'm only 40. No, actually right. public, public TV. Yeah. Right. Somebody, somebody will put it in the chat room who I'm talking about. Yeah, but somebody, somebody be our a, brain, please. Right. A very recognizable voice, Fred Malamud and, uh, Will so, Lyman. Will Lyman. JS came up with it. I knew it was Will something or other. But <clears> I could <throat> not remember the, you know, but I knew that. I've been watching Frontline for years. Anyway, we have to get Will Lyman on the show too. Because, you know, but anyway, yeah. Fred Malamud's going to be on the show. He's going to be great because he's a, he's a fun guy and and he's and he's been hitting Facebook a lot lately. He discovered Facebook and now we can't get rid of him. Yeah, I know. So, uh, and he's anyway. one of the few voice actors we know that, you know, is on screen a lot and sometimes even more so than voice. So, you know, we can right. kind of hear how that works for him. Absolutely. And we're going to do another audio masters round table. So we got to yep. get Cliff and Joe Van Ripper and, uh, and uncle Roy in here. And we'll, uh, we'll talk and answer your questions on, on technology, not just from George's and my point of view, but from other perspectives. And, and those mm-hmm. are always fun. And, uh, so That's we right. invite you to join that. Uh, what else do we have to do? We have to thank our donors, Eric Aragoni. We love you, man. <laughs> yeah. the guy, he's, he's like clockwork, man. He can set a watch. 
Very fine. Very kind I, of you, Eric. Thank you. We really appreciate it. It is a big help. In other words, we couldn't bring you people like you know Maurice LaMarche and Frank Melamed and uh, Fred Melamed and 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 all these other great people we've had on. Uh, also, um, we have to thank Harlan. Harlan, the H two guy, uh, who, who's now going to put Maurice on his website. Uh, because <laughs> yeah. he wants a porta booth. Uh, <laughs> Guess he's going to get a porta booth in the mail pretty soon. I'm sure he will. Uh, <laughs> our our friends at Edge Studio, uh, and of course, um, so Voiceover Essentials and uh, and Voiceover Extra. You know, you can still go to Voiceover Virtual. You still got another month. You can yeah. still sign up, and you can still see the 50 fabulous presentations at Voiceover Virtual. Do I not miss a, it. I got a lot of catch up on uh, over there. Actually, there's some stuff you know, I want to still want to watch. I know, and, and there's some stuff. You know, I've seen it also. But I can tell you, go watch it anyway. But I'm also going to be doing a, a night there, probably the same night as we're doing stuff with uh, Air Turn. Our good friend Hugh Sung is going to be on, and I'm going to be on too, oh, cool. talk, talking about Studio Suit. So if you have questions about Studio Suit and want to see it demonstrated, we're going to do that in a couple of weeks. I think it's it, like yeah. no, November 10th, I think we're going to be doing Air that. Air Turn is one of those products that you, you, sh you go to a trade show to find a product like that. You know, I went to NAM show and I found, found him in the basement of the NAM show. And if you've been there, the basements, the, you know, where the oddball products, the less known, the smaller companies, you know, go. And that's, I found him down there. And the next year he was at the voice convention, you know, yep. and, and, and now it's an awesome product. And he's a great piano player too. So we got to oh. get him on to play piano for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and speaking of shows, you still have some video from AES. I do. Want? I do. Speaking of trade shows, I threw one up uh, for you guys to see. It's a shorty, um, but there was some discussion about the new Neumann microphone. Uh, so I figured, well, let's, let's feature that one tonight. Let's give our friends at Neumann a shout out. Chris Courier, really great guy. He's the rep from Sennheiser Norman, Neumann that does all these trade shows. He's also a voice actor. And so if there's any of, you know, microphone company out there who really is getting intimate with the voiceover industry, it's certainly Neumann. They've always been there, but now they're really starting to, uh, you know, be aggressive about wooing the voiceover people. And Chris mm -hmm. is just a really nice guy, great guy. So anyway, here is my little bit from AES in New York City. This is Christopher Currier here at the 2013 AES, and we are very excited to be showing off a new Neumann microphone. It is the Neumann TLM 107, the first Neumann microphone to be multi-pattern and less than $2,000. It's $1699.95, five switchable polar patterns, a pad and a roll-off, both of which are multi-stage, and the really cool thing is that it's controlled by a new navigation switch. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna turn this puppy around. And here's our navigation switch. You press that to engage, and then go to the left to adjust your pad. Go to the right to adjust your roll off. And then up and down, adjust your polar pattern. Another cool thing for voice actors in particular is that this capsule was designed with a bunch of cool things in mind. One of those is an increased resistance to harsh S sounds, so you're gonna get a lot less sibilance. And then also, the capsule was designed so that it is much more resistant to humidity, moisture, and dirt. So the capsule's gonna stay cleaner longer, you don't have to worry about spitting into the capsule and having something go wrong. So the TLM 107, brand new from Neumann, and we're super excited about it. Thanks very much. There you go. And we're, and we're back. And we're back. Why, Chris's hair is really short. What's happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can hear it. it, it the, the, that trade show is much more calm than uh, it, the, the NAM show. So uh, I've got a lot of good stuff. A couple of products that I'd never seen before. Um, so a couple of those will be on this show. I'll throw a few of them up over on my little blog, Widom's World, and uh, we'll pepper them all over the place. So Absolutely. stay tuned. Yeah, we have to. We have both have to try that one, and I'm sure if we tell Chris, will be on the show. He'll both let us both try it. Oh, he has no problem sending out demo mics. I just had to ship some back recently for one of my clients who ended up sticking with a 103. That's right. So. Well, we we just gave him we just gave him press here, so that's right. I, I'm expecting mine by overnight tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. He's still probably hungover from AS. <laughs> 
Yeah. Not that he's you a know, drinker, but I mean, you know, just you're exhausted. Right. It's. I'm sure it's, it's very, very tiring. Yeah. You know, I, it's 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 interesting because there was a question in a forum today about you know, everybody said, "What microphone should I use for e-learning?" And and and, and the smart people came in and went, "If you have to ask, <laughs> you shouldn't be doing e-learning." Uh. You know, I mean, it's you know. So I'm like, well, let's see. I use my my 103 and my 416 and my my CAD, you know, E100S and my and my my you know AT3035 and you know, occasionally one of my ribbon mics, which is still proudly you know displayed here in my. Oh, display I know. Case. I'm so mad that I missed. I saw West Dooley at AES. I saw oh, their booth. Yeah. I never stopped by and got to actually talk to them, but they were showing off their new mic. Which yeah. is a which is a phantom powered ribbon Ribbon-like. microphone. Oh, I remember he was that. showing us the prototype of it when we were there. We got some video. We will eventually share with you guys. Yeah. from I mean the, he, he he gave us a lot of stuff, and and I want to make sure. I, it's like the Bible. You have to like pare it down into human understandable terms. <laughs> no, and and this mic is because uh, JS was like it's got to be six grand. That's what I think is pretty remarkable. I think it's it's about I think it's eight hundred ninety nine dollar. AEA ribbon microphone with phantom power. So it can actually be plugged into like a Scarlet 2i2. So he's really saying, you know, let's make a mic for the project studio for the home studio. So I'm really looking forward to getting a little shout out or shoot out with that mic. Or a shout out. And maybe an SM7, a dynamic mic or something else uh, in that general price range. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I'm 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 working on an interview. I mean, it's 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 like putting the Talmud together. I'm telling you, yeah, it's a lot of content. It is a lot of content, and he had <laughs> a lot to say. But a fact, we had such a great time with Wes when we oh, were yeah. at the AEA factory in in Pasadena. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I think that pretty much does it for tonight. Yeah. If that's if if that wasn't enough, did we just pack? A pile into an hour and twenty four minutes here. We sure did, man. You don't get a pile of kids. A pile. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. (laughs) Well, yes. Hey, we problems. We just we just roll right through them. That's right. Uh, I hope you did get you know like a long shot of me back in the studio. I did. I got it, and then I cropped in. Yeah, it was perfect. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) There's always something, you know. It's like the Skype total curveball last week. Now it's the microphone. I but tell now, you, it, man. now it's working great. It's beautiful. You know, I, I think I know what it was. Though. Okay. Sure. We, tell me off the air. If you're embarrassed. Will, you don't there's, want to tell there's me. Other, another things I got to tell <laughs> Plus, there's a, there's a joke I need to tell you off the air that will. I'll, you got it. I, 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 we, it has to do with all those microphones in front of you. I promise. All right. We'll, tell you guys to okay. We'll but do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we thought uh, we thanked our sponsors. Did we thank our wives yet? No. Uh, thanks, thanks, wives. Thanks, thanks gals. Boy, I, I I hope Ella finally went to sleep or calmed down over there. She's been quiet for the last half hour. That's good. Good. Uh, anyway, like us on Facebook. Like us as much as you want on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at eweb underscore show and subscribe on YouTube. And if you can't make the show, you can always watch it on YouTube. Of course. We recommend you go to YouTube and watch it there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, And make sure you like the video. When you watch and it. it is on iTunes because our our good friend Lee Penny has been making sure that each audio, the audio from each show gets up on iTunes and is in the feed for those who like listening to the show, audio only. Absolutely. And uh, I think that's going to do it for that's us it. tonight. Here comes next the daughter. Week, that's right. Google Hangout next week. I want to see great costumes. I want to see everybody there. Me too. So, so RSVP at ewapshop at gmail.com. So we can get you in there. She wants, oh, Ella oh. wants more tattoos. Oh, boy. She's got Halloween tattoos on. Oh, uh, you're feeling, oh, oh, put, oh, she's got her fairy I'm princess. Have two more. And I have a pumpkin and a ghost. You got it, kiddo. Let's sign off and we'll put on another tattoo. Right. Yeah. Say, say, uh, East West Audio Body Shop. East West Audio Body Shop. Great job. <laughs> Outstanding. All right, folks. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Wonderful being with you this week. I'm George Wim in the West. And I'm Dan Leonard in the East. <laughs> this is East and West Audio Buddies. She, she already said it for us. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm a creature, creature habit. And good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye.